If the United States is a nation of immigrants, it also has a long history of xenophobia and exclusion. With the election of Donald Trump four years ago, that history is increasingly in the forefront, along with its chief strategist in the Trump administration, senior advisor Stephen Miller. He's the subject of a new book called Hate Monger, Stephen Miller, Donald Trump, and the White Nationalist Agenda. We'd like to welcome the author, an award-winning investigative journalist, Jean Guerrero. Uh, thank you very much for being with us, Jean. Thank you, Chris. Great to be here. You know, I want to start with what you have in common with uh, Stephen Miller, a couple of fellow Americans who grew up in Southern California. So uh, how did he turn out differently from you? Well, that's what I wanted to find out, right? I mean, it, to most people who weren't, weren't in California in the 90s, it, it may seem surprising that, you know, the chief architect of Trump's anti-immigration agenda came from there. But when, you know, I, I became attracted to the story of Stephen Miller in part because I remember, you know, growing up in Southern California in the 90s and there being this sort of unprecedented hostility towards immigrants. Uh, you know, the Republican governor, Pete Wilson, was railing against the quote invasion at the border you know blaming all of the state's fiscal problems on migrants there were you know statewide bipartisan attacks on bilingual education on affirmative action on social services for children of undocumented migrants so just a lot of hostility towards immigrants and i remember you know growing up in that environment even as you know, as the daughter of, of a Mexican immigrant and a Puerto Rican woman really internalizing a lot of that racist rhetoric. And, and I remember there was, you know, a lot of shame associated with being Mexican. And so, so in, a, in a way, I, you, know, you know, reading about Stephen Miller and interviewing people who knew him when he was a kid and, and expressing these racist sentiments, there, there was a part of me that, you know, empathized with the young Stephen Miller who was internalizing um, you know, a lot of this rhetoric. And so I, I tried to approach the reporting from, from that perspective and trying to understand, you know, how it is that Stephen Miller continues to sound the same today as he did when he was 16, because he, he continues to, you know, be obs obsessed with the same themes and, and to use the same language to talk about immigrants. And, uh, you know, if, for me, it's, 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 he's truly a product of, of the environment in which he grew up. Well, a lot of us America who went to public schools, myself included, I encourage multiculturalism as part of the narrative of upward mobility. Stephen Miller encountered it sort of in a downward uh, trajectory. Uh, how do you think that influenced his thinking? Yeah, I mean, he saw multiculturalism as a threat, you know, to s unity and society. And, and for me, it, it's, it's a case study in radicalization because from my reporting for the book, it, it's clear that, you know, Stephen Miller was going through a hard time when he was a teenager. His family had been forced to move from a very affluent part of Santa Monica to, to a slightly less affluent part. And, you know, he, he was kind of, according to people who knew him, just, just kind of looking for somebody to blame at the time. And the state provided him, you know, with the perfect scapegoat. Um, and, and so he, you know, from a very young age, begins to express these sentiments. He breaks up with his Mexican friend because of his Latino heritage. He goes around his public high school telling his Mexican classmates to speak English, to go back to their countries if they can't learn the American way. He goes into school board meetings to argue with teachers about uh, measures to improve racial equity. Um, so he, he, he really adopts this stance that, you know, that, you know, multiculturalism and, 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 you know, things that celebrate diversity at the school, such as, you know, celebrations of Dia de los Muertos or Cinco de Mayo, that these things pose some kind of threat and it's and it's because you know during this difficult time in his life he he began to you know be exposed to a lot of right wing commentators like Rush Limbaugh and a local talk show host named Larry Elder and particularly a writer named David Horowitz who you know it was looking at the time he was really nurturing young conservatives like Stephen Miller to use the weapons of the civil rights movement against it so he because he, he's a former Marxist, he, he came from the left, he's able to teach young conservatives like Stephen Miller to use the language of the left against it. And, and he introduced Stephen Miller, you know, to this idea that, 
uh, that that everything that we hold dear in society is a is a result of white men, and that um, you know if you have too much diversity or too much multiculturalism, it ends up diluting things that we that we hold dear in society. And, and Stephen Miller is, is very much radicalized in this idea, and, and David Horowitz you know nurtures his his career for the rest of his life. Well, I'm sure the reason you wrote this book is, is that instead of growing up to be a troll who couldn't find a life. Uh, Stephen Miller became something much bigger, or at least what he's involved in became much bigger. So how did that happen exactly? Exactly. Um, you know, he, he, in part, it happened because he had the help of people like, you know, David Horowitz, who, um, you know, throughout college stayed in touch with him, would, would invite him to, to his house and to these uh, conservative forums that David Hor Horowitz uh, uh, holds every year on the West Coast and, and other places. And, you know, David, David, for a long time, Stephen Miller was seen as sort of a pariah. You know, he, his views were offensive to people. He used to have this column at Duke University where he was, you know, talking about the dangers of multiculturalism and singling out his black classmates and talking about how ra ra uh, systemic racism and institutional racism are, are fictions, that they're not real. And, and, you know, they were offensive to people, but people just kind of rolled their eyes. They thought he was just so out there and so fringe that he could never really do any harm. But, you know, David Horowitz, when, he, when Stephen Miller graduated, David Horowitz got Stephen Miller a job with Tea Party Congresswoman Michelle Bachman, <coughs> excuse me, and eventually with um, with Alabama Senator Jeff Sessions. And so he, he really sets him up career-wise. The people who were coming over the border, you know, seeking refuge in the United States, the detention centers, uh, they weren't handled that well under Obama either. Uh, but we saw some more sensational things going on under Trump and Miller. Uh, what do you think he was trying to do with that? Well, you're absolutely right. You know, I'd been covering Im the immigration issue under Obama, and we saw record deportations under Obama. And you know, under but under Trump, th th there was definitely a change as far as you know. Stephen Miller became obsessed with because he had been indoctrinated in these ideas that too many brown and black people in the United States is, is a dangerous thing. He became obs became obsessed with limiting all kinds of immigration, not just you know, not just targeting people who were in the country illegally, but primarily going after asylum seekers, uh, refugees, you know, families fleeing violence and, and finding ways to, he, he slashed ref, refugee admissions to his new historic lows every year. He uh, completely obliterated the asylum system as we know it at the U.S.-Mexico border. And, and it was about, you know, f for Stephen Miller, it was about re-engineering the ethnic flows into this country and he would you know take issue with my characterization of, of that but when you begin to look at where he was looking at where he was deriving his immigration policies where he has been deriving his immigration policies these are these are policies that he's deriving from think tanks that were created you know by white supremacists who believe in population control for non-white people and Stephen Miller primarily targeted people who were fleeing violence and persecution in their homes because you know because he was trying to get the numbers down and this is where you know the the character of immigration has changed over the years and primarily we see people coming here who are asylum seekers and refugees and these are the people who Stephen Miller decided to target as well as you know suspending green card access and just really finding ways to limit immigration overall not not just criminals and cartels but just you know immigrants speaking of numbers um, you know this whole process unfolds after 2012, an election year in which the Latino vote was seen as critical in Obama's victory. Yeah, isn't it really less about fear of MS-13 than American citizens of Latino heritage getting into the process? Exactly, exactly. I mean, for Stephen Miller, it, it was, it's, it's always been about families from Latin America, as well as from, from various African countries. You know, David Horowitz indoctrinated him in the, in the belief that, that t too many Muslims are a danger for the United States as well. And most refugees come from Muslim majority countries. So Stephen Miller, you know, really focused on keeping out people from Latin America and, and from various countries in, in Africa, you know, and Muslim majority countries. 
And, and this was about, because for him, he has these cultural c- concerns where he, b- because of all the white supremacist and white nationalist literature that he's reading, he believes that if too many people from Latin America and Africa come here, they're going to somehow destroy civilization, that they're incompatible with civilization and don't know how to, you know, do, do, do things that everyone else knows how to do. And so he, he, ha- he was very much focused on, on keeping out people from, from these countries for cultural reasons. And, you know, he, he, was, he was taught from a very young age how to launder white supremacist ideas through the language of heritage and national identity and, you know, prosperity, economy, national security, and really focusing on those things rather than skin color or race. But it, do, it does boil down when you look at the influences and, and where Steve, what, what Stephen Miller is de- deriving inspiration from, it, it boils down to a white nationalist view and trying to keep America a majority white country. You just finally mentioned where people can maybe track down the book and also follow your your thoughts on twitter yeah the book is available wherever books are sold you can find it on amazon or you know um indie bound wherever wherever you like and i'm at uh, on twitter and instagram at gene j-e-a-n-g-u-e-r-r-e 